Hello, and welcome to my glazing area, slash my basement. Um, today I wanted to talk about something that is new to me, and I've always been super curious about it, and that is single firing, or raw firing, raw glazing, as they say. I'm not reinventing the wheel here by any means, this is something that people do quite a bit, and the idea is that instead of bisque firing, before you glaze your pots, you just glaze them when they're greenware. And this saves you time, and this saves you money, and you can get different effects depending on your glazes and how they react in the kiln. I'm not going to lie, I haven't actually done this before and I'm super excited to get the results. I make all my own glazes and I'm just interested to see if I'll have to alter the recipes to get my desired results, you know, how things are going to vary. Um, yeah, so we will just get to it. I have these mugs here. These are just greenware. Um, they're bone dry. You want them to be bone dry. As far as I've read and as far as I've seen, you want the pots to be bone dry. They're not going to absorb the glaze like a bisque pot would. A greenware pot is not gonna have the same absorbency that a bisque pot would have. They have less absorbency as far as I can tell and as far as I've heard and it just kind of makes sense. Um, when you're bisking your pot, you're allowing, you know, it's re reaching a certain temperature, usually cone 04, 05, 06, it allows them to still be porous enough to absorb water and moisture faster than, you know, or better than a greenware pot would. What I was trying to get at here, what I had such a hard time coming up with is that you can picture your greenware like a sponge that already has water. If you add water on top of the sponge that already has water, there's only so much water it can keep absorbing. So you can think of a bisque pot as a sponge that's been wrung out, it has no water on it, and you picture your glaze as the water being added to that sponge. It's going to absorb a lot easier. Your greenware still has so much water in it that it's going to have a hard time absorbing the glaze than a bisque pot without any water in it would have. Um, and yeah, it's really just an experiment for me. And as far as I can tell, my glazes are still applying, you know, somewhat thickly. So I feel like it's going to work okay. But also, I really have no idea. So this will be a journey for the both of us, or for all of us. Um, yeah, so we will just get to it. I'm going to glaze the insides of these first. I'm gonna pour glaze on the inside, pour it out how I normally would, and then I'm gonna let these sit overnight because I really wanna make sure that that glaze on the inside, I wanna make sure that it's fully dried and that the pot basically returns to a bone dry state. It's gonna become so saturated with water after you pour that glaze on the inside can imagine the water trying to escape through the pot, trying to escape through the walls, through the outside here. So it's, it's going to saturate the pot again. So if you pour the inside, you know, pour out your glaze, and then you go for a dip right after, it's just not that dip right after. The glaze is not going to absorb that well on the outside of the pot. So yeah, you really just want to pour the insides, let them sit overnight, and then the next day you're going to want to uh, dip the outsides of the pots. I have a few that I've already finished, so I can just run us through this a little bit faster. And maybe just for like the purposes of this video, I will just dip one right after on the outside just so you kind of have the idea of what's going on here. So for starters, actually I'm going to use a different glaze. Um, this is a glaze. This label's wrong. This is actually this 
pebble glaze that I make that has a decent amount of red iron oxide in it, which gives it that somewhat kind of, I mean, brown looking color. Usually it's a lot deeper of a red. So I'm just going to mix it up. As per usual, that drill is very much stripped. Take our little measuring cup here. super dirty, so I had to give it a nice little rinse. You know, I feel like Ceramics 101 is do not contaminate <laughs> one glaze with the other, especially if you have a white glaze, you definitely don't want to get any glaze with a colorant in it. And as messy and disorganized as I am, try to really do my best at not contaminating my glazes. All right, so we have our, our greenware pot right here. And I'm just gonna clean up any little fingerprints I kind of see on here. You know, one of the setbacks of not glazing bisque pots are that these are extremely fragile and you can't really bang them around and handle them the way that you could with a bisque pot. All right, so I have two of these that I'm gonna do for an example. And uh, I'll do this one close up so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And then I'll do one that's a little bit further away. All right, so I'm just gonna take my glaze, blow out any dust that might be on the inside of that. And I'm just gonna pour it in like normal. Let it sit for a second. And now I'll just pour it out. Trying not to get too much glaze spilling on the outside. As I say that, <laughs> I spill a bunch on the outside. You can already see it starting to absorb into the clay and dry. So now I'm gonna take my spray bottle here and I'm gonna spray the outside of my pot and just get it saturated with some water the reason I'm spraying the outside of it is that, as I was saying, you know, you pour that glaze on the inside and that moisture is coming out through the wall of the pot. And by spraying a little bit of water on the outside there, I'm just putting some moisture back into it. So it has, you know, the ability to dry a little bit more evenly. Hopefully there won't be any bloating or cracking to occur and that can help eliminate the chances of that. Yeah, so I poured the inside of that mug, this mug right here, and I would just let that sit overnight before you dip the outside. For the purposes of this video, just to kind of show you an example of what I'm doing here, I'm gonna... I'm gonna not let this one sit overnight. And I'm just gonna immediately glaze the outside just to kind of show you how I dip and glaze these things. This glaze that I'm using here, I call it birch. It has a decent amount of titanium and uh, rutile in it. But I have a matte white base glaze that I use for the majority of my glazing and within that base glaze I'll kind of just add different color different colorants and oxides to it and get different different glazes out of it. Alright so here's our other greenware mug. This is kind of a different style handle. I don't normally do this little fishtail but I was feeling uh, some type of way so I just figured why not. All right, so here we go again. Here's our greenware mug. And I'm just gonna pour the inside as I normally would with bisqueware. Let it sit for a second in there. Pour out that outside. 
and I'm just gonna immediately dip it. And I'll do like a six second dip for this, just because, like I was saying earlier, I think a setback to this single, single fire slash raw glazing, at least from what I've noticed, it, it doesn't absorb the same way a bisque, a bisque pot would. The glaze does not dry it nearly as fast as it does with a bisque pot. Normally, I wouldn't have just immediately uh, dipped that pot right after pouring it inside. I guess that'll, I guess that'll also be an experiment. We'll see what happens. So here's the other one that I just poured the inside of. You can see, I mean, my lighting's so bad down here, but you can, you can kind of see it's still just so cold to the touch and there's so much water in there from that, from that glaze getting poured in there. So yeah, normally I would let that sit overnight. The next day I would come back in, dip the pot, give it like a six second dip. And then I would let that sit again for maybe four hours uh, at least enough to where it feels like it's dried all the way. These, you don't want to stick them right into the kiln after. They're going to be so saturated with water that, at least in my mind, it feels like there'd be a good chance of you blowing up a few pots if you just stuck them straight into the kiln. I guess depending on how fast you're firing. Maybe if you did a slow fire, you could get away with it. But I don't want to take that chance. I feel like the uh, the risk of blowing up glazed pots and getting glaze all over your kiln for a glaze firing sounds just really messy. <laughs> that one that I did just immediately dip after, it kind of looks okay. The thickness of the glaze is actually kind of decent. This will be a test. We will see the results of just the immediate dip and the one that I'll let sit overnight and uh, just see like the absorbency and how well the glaze actually adhered to the pots. All right, so these ones are all done. These have been sitting for a few days. I poured the insides of these, let them sit for a day. I think yesterday, maybe the day before, I glazed the outsides of these so they've sat again. And now these are ready to go into the kiln. Yeah, I'm just kind of cleaning up these pots. I do this with bisque pots as well. Glaze has a tendency, at least my glazes have a tendency to leave like little pit hole marks and little cracks will kind of appear sometimes. So I really just do my best to get rid of those. And that's kind of just by rubbing the outsides. I rub the rims a little bit. It might be hard to tell on the camera, but there's some little pinholes here on the handle. And I just try to clean those up. I also know <laughs> it's not lost on me that dry glaze blowing it around, not wearing a mask is not the best example. Normally, blowing these glazes around when they're in this dry state, not the healthiest thing to do, but uh, I'm trying to talk at the same time as I'm doing this. And having a mask on just might make that a little bit hard. This is my, st my studio assistant who really likes to get into everything. There you go. So yeah, I'm just going through these pots, cleaning up any little pit holes, any irregular irregularities in the glazes that I can see, just kind of rubbing my finger over them. Being careful not to take off uh, too much of the glaze here because of the state at least for these glazes, they become super powdery and they really just like to fall off of the pots. This is 
just kind of the last little once over before I put them in the kiln. If this works out and these glazes work well for this raw firing or single firing, it'll, it'll be huge in that I'll save time by not having to bisque fire as much and I'll be saving money because uh, every time I run my kiln, I think it's like 12 bucks or something, something like that. Yeah, just continuing to clean up these pots and these look like they're about ready for the kiln. I wanted to come back for a quick second because there was something I didn't mention. I generally use three clay bodies. I use a red stoneware, a white stoneware, and a brown stoneware. The red stoneware has a decent amount of iron in it. The brown stoneware has some manganese in it. And the white stoneware is just, you know, more of a safe bet. It doesn't really have a lot of added stuff to it other than maybe, uh, I think it has some grog in it. Maybe like 70 mesh grog or something like that. Anyways, the colored stoneware is the brown and the red are kind of notorious for off-gassing when they're reaching temperature in the kiln where the white stoneware doesn't do that as much. The brown stoneware, if it's over-fired, it has a tendency to bloat, which isn't great for the glazes. Um, kind of based off of not a whole lot of science other than what I think might happen, I feel like <laughs> This brown stoneware is going to off gas. Um, and I feel, or I guess my biggest worry is that these glazes are going to blister or bloat or maybe bubble a bit. I know the bisking for the brown stoneware and the red, they'll have that chance to do a bit of off gassing after quartz inversion and, you know, once they get past a certain temperature, they'll start releasing some of the um, the gases that are in there. Um, sorry, I'm not <laughs> breaking this down maybe as well as I could. But my worry is that since these are just going in green, it didn't have that time as bisqueware to do that bit of off-gassing, and now it's just going to happen while the glaze is applied to it. So... That is my biggest concern with doing this. My fear is that the white stoneware is the only one that I will be able to get a decent result with. But this is all just speculation. Um, yeah, time will truly tell. And one other thing that I just wanted to cover real quick was I would be able to wax the bottoms of these and maybe do a single dip my fear with that is that I wouldn't get the glaze to absorb as well as I could by doing a pour and then dipping. So while maybe that could save me time, I feel like this is a better way to get a, just like a, just a better application of the glaze. But I could very well be wrong. Like I was saying earlier, I'm not reinventing the wheel by doing this. This is something that's been done for many, many years. Um, I'm firing all these to cone six oxidation. And um, yeah, let's get these in the kiln and get it going. I do, um, I do also have just maybe three or four of these um, raw glazed mugs at a different part of the kiln for the most part heat rises in any circumstance um, and generally the bottom of the kiln is going to be the coolest part of your kiln. Some of my glazes and some of my clays like to fire on the cooler side whereas some like to fire on the hotter side. So I placed some of these in the middle and a couple on the bottom as well. So you know the middle where my thermocouple is generally is the hottest part of the kiln and It'll be interesting just to see the results of, uh, yeah, just what uh, what these mugs prefer. And 
and I think that does it. I'm praying to the uh, praying to the kiln gods here for some successful results. Anything that I was really explaining in this video, I you know have been doing pottery at this point for almost 14 years, and I've never dabbled with single firing. So this is pretty exciting. And uh, by no means am I an expert at this. And this is just, I thought it'd be fun to share the process and share my results. I couldn't find a whole lot about it as far as videos go. I'm sure people have covered it, but um, hopefully this information can be somewhat useful to somebody out there. And yeah, wish me luck. So it's been a couple days. The kiln is completely cool. We did take a peek earlier, me and my little assistant. And the results are pretty good. Some of the glazes worked out really well. And I think a couple of them were a little bit too thin, which was my fear initially. I think one of the most surprising things is that any of these darker stonewares that I was worried about, with the off-gassing and the bloating, it didn't happen at all. They're, the glazes are completely smooth, and that was a huge shock. Um, some of the pots, I throw these bottoms really thin because I don't do a lot of trimming on the bottoms of my mugs. This one was too thin for this to work because I think just the glaze saturated through the clay and maybe it was already cracked before I put it in the kiln. I didn't even realize it, but this one actually broke on the bottom and cracked. And I think when I bisque fire these, that is something that I can avoid. Um, but yeah, I think a few solutions to some problems I had as far as the glazes being too thin, you know, one of the most obvious ones feels like I can dip it twice, but my worry there is that the clay will be oversaturated. There'll be too much water in it, or maybe it'll be too heavy. Maybe it'll be completely fine. These are all things I'm gonna test and try again. But yeah, I think overall it felt like a success. I haven't gotten to the middle or the bottom yet, but all the pots that were in the top of the kiln, which is generally one of the hotter parts, worked out. Even this one that I poured and then immediately just dipped after, the glaze was applied, you know, seemingly almost just as thick as the others. It is a little bit thinner, but there is no breakage except for a cracked bottom. There's no glaze all over the kiln. I fired it on a medium setting, which, you know, the temperature ramped up a lot quicker than with a bisque firing where I'm firing it on a, on a slow setting. And it feels like it worked. Um, it feels exciting. And uh, yeah, I'm eager to do some more tests, but I think the biggest, the biggest win overall is that these dark clay bodies are gonna be okay. It feels like I don't have to bisque them first and like they're not gonna off gas too much and destroy the surface of the pots. It feels like it's gonna be all right. All right, so here is a comparison between a single fire raw glaze and a pot that was bisqued and dipped. So this is my birch glaze. Granted, this is on a red clay and this is on uh, that brown clay that has some manganese in it. But you can see for the most part, they look pretty similar. This one's definitely thicker. It definitely has a lot more of like a matte kind of cream color, which is what I expect. But I got this grayish blue spotting in this one that is just really pretty and I actually really like it. I'm happy with the results for the most part. This dune glaze that I have, this one didn't perform as well as it does with, um, with a bisque pot compared to a single fire. You can see there's 
just a lot more solid, kind of looking green, almost like a mottled green, which is, you know, how it usually looks with a bisque pot. And then on this one, you can see the thicker drips. So I think you know, the way that I'm going to achieve that is by either double dipping or thickening my glaze or just not achieving it and just leaving them how they are because they still work. They're they're completely fine. They're completely functional. I'm excited to uh, to see where this takes me. I think that glazing anything bigger than a mug will be a bit of a challenge just because the pieces are going to be fragile and a bigger a bigger piece feels a little bit scarier. Yeah, for any of the small pieces, for any of these oil cruets, I think it's going to be a good method if I need to fill a, fill a kiln in a crunch or I just want to save a little bit of money and time. So yeah, there's my, uh, there's my, there's my single fire <laughs> raw glazing first go. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for what's to come.